I'm gonna be honest, I really don't wanna make this video. Find out why, coming up. And we are live, you already know who it is. My name is Mike Kyle, AKA the Fantasy Vulture. I have over a decade worth of fantasy football experience and I've continuously competed for fantasy championships over the course of the past eight seasons. Let's make it nine in 2021. But enough of me, I'm here for you on today's episode of the FB Show. I'm going to tell you guys who the number one player on my rookie draft board is. I'm terrified to make this video and I will get into that in just a moment. So if you want to see a grown man potentially cry on stream or on video, hit that like button down below. Subscribe so you never miss a video from me. I have like 120 player profiles coming out over the course of the next three months. So be sure to stick around for all that fantasy goodness. It's officially draft season, baby. And also... Follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture and check out the website FFVulture.com for some premium fantasy football content. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. So, I need to set the stage first. I need to set the stage first because without that and without setting the table, you guys will understand why I'm terrified to make this video. I have the number three overall pick in my Dynasty Rookie Draft, which is taking place this weekend. I already know who's going number one. That's going to be Najee Harris running back from Alabama. But at number two, this is where it starts to get interesting. The player, the person who owns the number two pick is currently deciding between the player that I love and somebody else. And that person is going to be watching this video because they watch my content. So Kenzie, please, for the love of God, do not snipe me. Please, please don't. You will see me cry at our draft. If that's the case, like I'm so excited to make this video though that I'm standing up, which is probably gonna be something that, that's gonna be changing in this content in our, in our in our content here. But that's besides the point. So I've been throwing smoke screens left, right, and center for the better part of a month and a half. Everyone's been trying to figure out what I'm doing at my number three overall pick. And as this offseason started off as running back for me, it really did. I traded to get my pick back this year because I'm like I knew it was gonna be an early pick. And I wanted to get in on either Travis Etienne or Najee Harris or Javante Williams. So it, it started off that way. And my full intention was to go running back. And about a month and a half ago, that, that flipped. That flipped. So now that you guys know the, the stakes and, the, and you know what's going on here. Remember, I'm making this video for you at this point. Because I'm literally shooting myself in the foot by making this video and blowing my smoke screen up entirely. Kyle Pitts ladies and gentlemen, is the number one player on my board. So let, let's talk about it. I made a video about Kyle Pitts earlier this offseason, and I really teased this idea. And just the more and more I sat on it, the more it made sense. So I'm going to break this up into a few different parts, and let's just talk about Kyle Pitts, the player who broke my rookie algorithm, literally broke it, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So we're going to break this up into measurables, landing spot, fantasy landscape, and then just some other concerns or, you know, some issues. I'm going to, I'm going to ease you guys just a little bit here. So measurables. Guys, he's 20 years old. He cannot buy a drink in the United States. Watch his, watch these tapes, watch the plays, watch the highlights, and just, and just think to yourself, he can't walk into a bar legally right now. Do doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. He's six foot six, 245 pounds, and ran a 4 4 9 40. And for my own just entertainment, I wanted to take a look at a comparison I could make here. And I think I found one. I went through the NBA and I'm like, whose game reminds me of Kyle Pitts? And I think I have a really good comp here. Guys, Kyle Pitts is Miles Bridges if Miles Bridges played tight end, right? And here's what I mean. If you watch Miles Bridges and you're a fan of the NBA, you know the sheer power and force that Miles Bridges is on the basketball court, right? He's hench, he's built, he is a freak athlete, jumps out of the gym, poster after poster after poster. And that's what Kyle Pitts really is at the tight end position. And that's really intriguing just from the sheer athlete that he is and the mismatch that he is at that position. His best season at Florida was 67 targets, 43 receptions, 775 yards, and 12 touchdowns. You guys are watching the tape right now. This dude is a fucking stud. 
So here's where I'm really gonna go with this side of this of the argument here. If somebody told you that you could draft Superman in your fantasy football draft, would you do it? And here's what I mean, right? I just read you off those measurables and I'll do it one more time for you. Six foot six, 245, 4440. Pr pretty good, pretty good. Mismatch across the position, just dominates defenses. If we were doing a superhero draft and you had the number two overall pick, wouldn't you pray to God that whoever had that first pick would fuck up and not take Superman, right? Superman comes from the name superhero, invincible, invincibility, strength, speed, power, hench. Like, what are we doing here? He is a fucking cheat code at this position based off of size and speed and athleticism alone. So that's where this starts. That's where this starts. Now let's go to landing spot. And my video was made before he was landed and selected by the Atlanta Falcons. So what did the Falcons do? They spent their number four overall pick on Kyle Pitts. And they also declined Hayden Hurst's fifth year option. And they traded for Hayden Hurst last year for a second round pick. And Hayden Hurst just simply didn't live up to expectations in this offense. But we know that this Atlanta Falcons team is a fucking juggernaut. Matt Ryan, for three straight seasons, has attempted over 600 passes. Matt Ryan consistently throws for around that 400, and, or I'm sorry, that 4,800 yard range, has eclipsed 5,000 yards multiple times. And Hayden Hurst last season, who had a down year by and large, 88 targets, 58 receptions, 571 yards, and six touchdowns. And that was a bad year. That was a bad year in this offense, right? Like that's it. That's where this starts. To me, that's really where this starts is when you combine the measurables with the offense. And I'm not even done talking about the offense yet because the Atlanta Falcons bring in Arthur Smith from the Tennessee Titans. And if you watch the Titans this year, you know that one of the breakout players on that team in the league who got the fucking bag this offseason was Jonu Smith. And Jonu Smith was third at the tight end position in red zone targets with 17. And he was second at the position in touchdowns with eight. One behind Travis Kelsey, who scored, I think, in week 17 to really put, to, to put himself above Jonu by one score. And you're telling me the guy who was running that offense now gets Kyle Pitts, now gets Superman in his first year? All right, interesting. Oh, and that that that, uh, that Julio Jones guy, yeah, him, the one that just publicly requested a trade multiple times, might I add, who's absolutely going to be dealt at some point this offseason. He's out of here. The uh, the same Julio Jones that consistently is requiring 130 targets. All right, interesting. So you tell me, worst case scenario is Kyle Pitts comes in and is probably going to get 100 targets. But by and large, 100. I mean, I'll, I'd assume he'd get targeted more than Hayden Hurst did. But well, let's, you know, let's just ballpark it. Let's not, even, let's not even give him the full 100. Let's give him 80. Let's give him 80 targets. Okay, fine. 80 targets. He had 67 his last year in Florida and still put up 12 touchdowns and over 700 yards. And then you give him Matt Ryan as your quarterback and not Kyle Trask. Okay, <laughs> pretty good start. And so he's the number three on the option. He's the number three option on the team then. And then we take away Julio Jones. And then the floor of Kyle Pitts only goes up like this because you remove 130 targets and those targets got got to got to go somewhere. What what better place to go to than the player that you just spent your number four overall pick on? Am, am, am I making sense? Are you following me? Are you following me? Okay, cool, cool. So measurables, metrics, through the roof, landing spot, through the roof, and let's talk tight end landscape and the scope of fantasy. As you know, because you watch fantasy football content, you live fantasy football, you know that the tight end position is an absolute hellhole outside of the top four or five, right? From top to bottom, it is the biggest positional advantage at the top. 
we know wide receivers grow on trees. We know that quarterback and the quarterback situation is so oversaturated that super flex has become a thing. We know that running backs are able to, yes, they get hurt. There are running backs that pop up every single year. And even if you don't have great running backs, by and large, you can navigate them through trades. You can pick them up on the waiver wire when a starter gets hurt. And we just have these guys that pop up every single year, like I was saying. But that doesn't happen with the tight end position. It just doesn't. It just doesn't happen. You have your Kelsey's, your Kittles, your Andrews, and your Wallers, and then you have everybody else. And you're, we just have preached for so long, just, hey, here's four guys who could break out in the back of your drafts, just take your shot on one of them. And it really wasn't until I had Mark Andrews in Dynasty the past two years where I really started coming around on the value of having a consistent tight end, a set it and forget it type player to where you're able to just not worry and you're able to have this weight list lifted off your shoulder of, is my tight end going to have two receptions for 10 yards or is he going to be a consistent four catches, 60 yards and a score type of guy, right? Because this is a game of positions and just a tight end uh, from top to bottom is just such, such an advantage when you have one of those guys that you can routinely start with no worries whatsoever. And then also, this is where he broke, this is where Kyle Pitts broke my algorithm entirely. So because of that, and because of that approach that I've taken to tight end by and large throughout the course of my fantasy career, I honestly don't, I don't, I don't value tight ends all too much, to be honest. Like, I'll take the shot, I'll take the, you know, I'll, I'll find the guy that I, like, that, I like, that I like late, excuse me, throw that dart, and if not, I'll find a way to just cycle through tight ends if I have to, right? Because I'd much rather have that running back early, like that second or third round, that wide receiver, that stud wide receiver as well, uh, compared to that tight end. So when I'm making these rookie algorithms and I'm trying to figure this out, and it's the same one that I used last year, it's gonna be the one that's gonna be available to you uh, uh, in my fantasy packages, ffvulture.com for that if you want access to it. I do positional weights when I'm making my rankings because simply put, I don't value positions like I do others, right? There's no reason for me to value quarterbacks super highly if I'm not in a super flex league because there's so many of them and by and large, all their production is pretty much the same. Uh, wide receivers can be said can be the exact same way. It's why I don't value wide receiver a whole lot right now. Uh, running back, I value the most because they are the thing that wins your championships. I've been saying this forever. And then tight ends have always just been this meh type thing where it's like, eh, just just find one, right? Just, you know, you know your shit well enough to where you can manage the tight end position. It's not going to be fun, but you know how to manage it. Until Kyle Pitts came along. So the way that my positional weights work, I do everything on a five point scale. I have running backs are worth five, wide receivers are four, tight ends are, I think, two, and quarterbacks are worth one. And I was doing my initial rookie rankings and just plugging everybody into the algorithm, and it spit me out with Kyle Pitts as my number five player on the board. But as I just went through, you know, knowing the tight end landscape, knowing the landing spot, knowing the metrics and the measurables, it's just, it's not possible. Like there's no way that Kyle Pitts, this generational talent, the number one tight end ever on Mel Kuyper's draft board can be number one. It just doesn't make sense. And I just tried playing. I, I was making sure my numbers were right. I was making sure that my numbers for the other players ahead of him were right. And it just didn't work because the positional weight is what brought him down. In every single other category, Kyle Pitts's score was as maxed out as it could possibly get. It was to the max. It was perfect all across the board. Except that positional weight just brought him down compared to everybody else because I just traditionally don't value tight ends as highly as the other positions just because it's always such a barren wasteland. Like, why would you value that position? But then you have this golden child, this superhero, just grace, grace your presence, grace your presence. And you have no choice. You have no choice. I had to bump Kyle Pitts' positional value because of the advantage that he provides. I had to bump him. 
compared to all the other tight ends. So he single-handedly broke my algorithm because of just how good he can be and how good he's going to be. Now, I hear I hear you guys in the comments, you know, that rookie tight ends don't perform well and just, you know, there's a lot of just meh, a lot, a lot of concerns about rookie tight ends. Guys, I don't care. I don't care. This is dynasty. This isn't redraft. This isn't redraft. You're not having Kyle Pitts for just a year. You're having Kyle Pitts for his entire career. And if you're picking at the bottom of your drafts, or I guess at the top of your drafts, where Kyle Pitts is an option, odds are you're probably a bad team. You're probably in a rebuild that's going to be several years away from you contending. Or if you traded back and you traded back into you know the top three, four, or five to try and get Kyle Pitts, then you have a Kelsey or a Waller or a Kittle or an Andrews, right? To where you won't need to rely on Kyle Pitts right away. Now, that brings me to my next point here. The ages of those players. Kelsey is 31, Kittle's 28, Waller's 28, and Andrews is 25. He's the young one of the group, but Baltimore just brought in two great wide receivers in the draft. That's probably going to impact Andrews' value just a little bit. Andrews is also just very typically touchdown dependent as well. And make what you will about the Baltimore Ravens offense. I personally love it, but I know a lot of people have concerns about it. So where's the downside here of having two great tight ends that when, okay, you have Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey ages out. Congratulations, you take Kyle Pitts and you slide him right in. It, 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 it's perfect. It is perfect. You have a generational talent. You have a generational talent here that breaks algorithms, is a freak athlete, just dominates the position, a wide receiver playing tight end, lands in a great offense, and we're, how, how, how is he not number one on everybody's board here? What are we doing? What are we doing? It does, it, for fun, when I was making this video and I was making my outline for it, I went through Fantasy Pros, shout out to Fantasy Pros, and I wanted to see how many people had Kyle Pitts as the number one rated rookie in this class. Guys, I think it was like four people out of 27 experts. Why? Why? Speaking of four out of 27, I, I, I skipped that point entirely too. Uh, the tight end position, going back to how much of a barren wasteland it is, there were only four tight ends last year who averaged over 10 points per game. Only four average double digits. There are 32 starting tight ends. 12% of them were in double digits. What are we doing here? It, it's... It's baffling. It's... It's baffling. I, I can't believe that this is even a fucking conversation. And again, even if you have one of these studs, what's the downside of having two great tight ends? It's... I, I can't. I can't. This, hurt, this, this hurts my head trying to figure out how Kyle Pitts is not the first player taken in every single rookie draft this year. It's, it's wild. It's wild. So that's honestly all I have to say. Oh, I'm sorry. One more point. Back, I want to go back to the whole uh, rookie tight end spiel. Um, again, this is just one year of Kyle Pitts' career. If he doesn't pan out for whatever reason in year one, congratulations, you have him for the next decade. And because he's only 20, if you had Kyle Pitts now in 10, in 10 years, in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, in 10 years, he will still be younger than Travis Kelsey is right now. And that's it. And that's it. So Kyle Pitts, let's wrap this up one more time. Literally broke my algorithm. Superman at the position, lands in an incredible spot and plays a position that's been an absolute hellhole for fantasy players for the better part of the entire existence of fantasy football. So thank you so much for watching me rant. Please, Brandon Kinsey, do not stipe me. I'm, I'm going to cry if you do. And I'm gonna go have a I'm gonna go have an anxiety attack now for the next like two days trying to pray to God that I don't get sniped. So Kinsey, take Jamar Chase. I know you love him very much. And I know that you are 50-50. Take Chase, but uh, do it because if you snipe me, I will be very very sad. 
All right, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe down below so you never miss a video from me. Got tons of videos coming out over the course of the next three months, and follow me on all social media platforms at FFBulture. Remember, people come and go, but fantasy championships are forever, and I will see you in the next video.